Hey guys, today I'm bringing you the second part of a video that I published a few weeks ago. In this video I'm bringing you more deaths, of which some are confirmed by leaked plots, some of them are confirmed by leaked photos, while some are only supported by a few theories of mine. In part 1 I introduced you with the Night King's master plan that will eventually result with Cersei's and Jaime's death, and even possibly with the death of Jon Snow. In that video I explained you how all main characters in Game of Thrones, as well as all of us fans, expect the great battle to be fought in the North, on a front defined by the advance of the army of the dead, and partly we are correct. The North will face a hundred thousand strong army army of White Walkers and their Whites, but the Night King will fly Viserion to the far south across the old Westeros and will raise the dead, thus the entire continent will be facing a horde of Whites overnight. This theory of mine has not only been foreshadowed multiple times throughout the series, but it's also supported with a few visions from the future that are yet to come true, the shadow of a dragon flying over King's Landing and the one in which Bran sees King's Landing in winter with an empty throne room that has its roof blown off, the same one the near saw in the House of the Undying. Basically, the Night King will create a huge army in the south while sacrificing his current army in the north. In that video, I also introduced with the death of Cersei Lannister, which will be a result of her becoming the Mad Queen. The one to put an end to Cersei will be her own little brother Jaime, who will right after that be killed by the mountain. This is a short summary of what first part looked like, but if you haven't already checked the whole thing, I highly suggest you to do so and then come back to watch this video. Anyways, in this video, I'll be introduced with the deaths of Daenerys Targaryen, Melisandre, and the mountain. Let's start with the death of infamous Sir Gregor the Mountain Clegane. Remember me? Yeah, you do. You're even fucking uglier than I am now. What do they do to you? Doesn't matter. That's not how it ends for you, brother. You know who's coming for you. You've always known. A long anticipated duel between the Mountain and the Hound, often referred to by his fans as Clegane Bowl, has seemingly been set for the final season. Clegane Bowl will take place a few moments after the death of Cersei and Jaime Lannister. As I already said in part 1, Jaime, upon realizing that Cersei intends to use Wildfire to get rid of all her enemies, including Jon's and Danny's armies that came to save the capital, will have to put an end to Cersei's madness. Jaime already did a huge sacrifice in order to save hundreds of thousands of innocent lives by killing the Mad King and has ever since been called the Kingslayer. However, Cersei will now intend to do the same. Jaime is going to kill his sister once she gives an order to Kyburn to, as the Mad King used to say, burn them all. Jaime will do noble sacrifice once again, but this time he will not trade it with his honor, this time it requires his life. Jaime will sacrifice himself by killing Cersei as the mountain will kill him immediately. In the leaked script it says the Hound and Brienne are riding towards the Red Keep at the moment of Jaime's huge argument with Cersei. Therefore it's safe to say that the Hound with Brienne's help will avenge Jaime's death. Brienne will arrive in the throne room with the Hound just at the time to see the mountain striking down Jaime. That's the moment the game ball will take place. The Hound will finally fight and eventually kill his brother in the duel while Jaime is exhaling his final breath in Brienne's arms. This Jaime's ending has been foreshadowed back in the fourth episode of the fifth season. In that episode, Bran asked Jaime how would he like to die and Jaime responded with, in the arms of the woman I love. Aye, but you all ought to give the singers a good ending. I don't care what's sung about me when I'm dead. No? Two nights off to rescue a princess. Sounds like a good song to me. Sounds like all the rest. What about you? What shit way would you choose? In my own keep, drinking my own wine, watching my sons grovel for my fortune. How disappointing. I thought you'd have something more exciting planned. I've had an exciting life. I want my death to be boring. How do you want to go? In the arms of the woman I love. She want the same thing. That woman would be Brienne. Anyway, Sandor Clegane will finally have his justice in the final season. Now, let's see how Danny's role in Game of Thrones might end. The most popular fan theory would definitely be Danny's sacrifice and death in order to end the Long Night. Both John and Danny are tied to the Azra High prophecy, which includes a historic legend of a hero sacrificing his love in order to save the world from the Long Night. Melisandre already told Daenerys that she has a role to play in the prophecy, as does Jon Snow. Daenerys' role in the Long Night by this theory would be her taking a sword into her heart as a sacrifice required to win the Great War. However, while this theory would most certainly match with George R. R. Martin's announced bittersweet ending, I still believe that a theory of mine that I introduced to with over a year ago will come true. It's Daenerys becoming the Night's Queen. The Night's Queen is an unseen woman in Game of Thrones, a legendary figure known in the Seven Kingdoms and among the Free Folk. 
According to a legend, the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch found in a haunted forest a cold woman with bright blue eyes. He took her to the other side of the wall and declared himself as the Night's King. Their love and reign lasted for 13 years, whereupon the free folk rallied under the banner of a king beyond the wall and marched against the Night's King's seat against the Night Fort, which resulted with Night's King defeat with the aid of House Stark. Prior in Game of Thrones, we've learned that the leader of the White Walkers, Night King, is able to create other White Walkers, but it seems that he can only create one if that human being is pure-blooded and says born. This means that the Night's King could turn Daenerys into one of them, since Daenerys is pure-blooded and says born daughter of King Aerys and Queen Rhaella Targaryen. The only way for the living side to end the Long Night is to either defeat them, which would be insanely hard, or to make a pact. This pact of ice and fire would include Daenerys. Have you ever wondered why is the Night King even coming south? Why was he preparing an army all those years with which he started marching south at the moment of Daenerys' arrival at Westeros? I was wondering about that ever since the sixth season ended, and I came to a conclusion that Daenerys' arrival at Westeros is the reason of the Night King's preparations, the reason of his march south, and is the reason of every single death that the Seven Kingdoms is going to confront. Daenerys could have won the throne as soon as she arrived at Westeros if she wanted to. Do you help? Not to defeat Cersei. You could storm King's Landing tomorrow and the city would fall. Hell, we almost took it and we didn't even have dragons. Almost. But you haven't stormed King's Landing. Why not? The only reason I can see is you don't want to kill thousands of innocent people. It's the fastest way to win the war, but you won't do it. Which means, at the very least, you're better than Cersei. As John stated, Danny did not take the throne yet, only because many innocent people would have died if she had decided to storm King's Landing. She did not attack King's Landing because she didn't want to cause death upon millions of innocent people and she will not ever sit on the Iron Throne because she will decide to give up her life so those people, including her child, could live. Daenerys' visions are foreshadowing that Danny could easily win the Iron Throne and sit on it, but it also foreshadows that she will realize that she will not be able to sit on the same since she will have to give up on it for the greater good. She will accept a pact with the Night King in order to end the Long Night. Daenerys will become the Night's Queen, whereupon herself and the Night King will go beyond the wall and rule over it, as a form of peace agreement between the living and the dead. Beside Daenerys' visions, as I've already said earlier in this video, Daenerys' arrival at Westeros and the Night King's preparations and his march to the south fits perfectly in the timeline. I don't think it's coincidence that all those years the Night King was preparing and gathering huge army with which he started marching south at the time of Daenerys' arrival at Westeros. Also, the fact that the show included multiple scenes that are proving that the Night King can create other White Walkers only if that human being is a pure-blooded incest born has to be foreshadowing something huge. To that add the fact that Daenerys is incest born daughter of King Aerys and Queen Rhaella Targaryen and this theory has a huge chance of coming true. Not only that this theory would be one of the greatest surprises that showrunners could pull out, but it would also fit perfectly with the bittersweet ending that George R. R. Martin announced. Daenerys will in this theory die in the hands of the Night King as Daenerys will shortly after open her eyes as the Night's Queen. If you would like to know all details about it, the Night's Queen theory of mine, feel free to check out a video by the name The Night King is Coming for Daenerys. The final character I will include in this video and put on death list for season 8 is Melisandre. If you don't mind my saying, I don't think you should return to Westeros. I'm not sure you'd be safe here. Oh, I will return, dear spider. One last time. My lady. I have to die in this strange country. Let me now introduce you with a prediction regarding both her appearance and her death. Let's start with the last sentence Melisandre said to Jon. You know the Great War is still to come. You know the Army of the Dead will be upon us soon. And you know I can help you win that war. Once Melisandre returns to Westeros, which I expect to happen early on in the season, she most certainly will not remain south, but will go north where the Great War between the Living and the Dead will be taking place at this point of the season. Taking into consideration the fact that Melisandre has been exiled from the north, Melisandre will probably take off her necklace along with her beauty and youth with it, and would once again reveal her true form, which is a frail old woman who is approximately 400 years old. Melisandre in her true form would return to Winterfell, since no one has ever seen her true form, no one actually knows how she really looks like. Back in the third season, 
is a Melsangio prophesied to Arya that they will meet again one day, which might go in favor to this prediction regarding Melsangio's reappearance. Regarding Melsangio's death, there are a couple of possibilities, such as Melsangio having to reveal who she actually is to Jon Snow in order to convince him into her new prophecies, which would cost Melsangio her life. Melisandre revealing who she actually is to Jon would lead to her death, since Jon promised her that if she is to return to the North, he'll have her hanged as a killer. Another possibility is a prophesied meeting between Melisandre and Arya, which could also lead to Melisandre's death. We know that Arya is dedicated on decreasing the names on her kill list, and we also know that Melisandre's name is on that list. Considering all those facts, Arya killing Melisandre most certainly doesn't seem to be out of the realm of possibilities. While there are a few ways for Melisandre to go off, one is certain. Her scene from Season 7 is confirming that she will not survive the Game of Thrones. And as always, let me know your opinion about all of this in the comment section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please make sure to subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!